Well, this morning, we are going to look at Ephesians. We're not going to do the, the prayer sermon series I had planned because I thought we have to take advantage of Vacation Bible School and these cool props that Megan helped get, get us. And, and, and so we're going to look at Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10, with verse 10 being the memory verse that your kids were supposed to memorize through Vacation Bible School. So if you would stand with me for the honor of reading God's Word as we look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Paul was writing here to the church at Ephesus, and he says, And you, speaking of, of, of believers who are now believers, speaking of what their life was like apart from Christ, he says this, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, aren't you glad for the but God? But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no man may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful this morning that we can come and hear from you, God. I pray that all that we've done so far has been pleasing and honoring in your sight as we've worshipped you, Lord. I pray that as we hear from your word, you'd speak clearly to us, God, and help us to see your amazing grace and, and the new creation that you have made each and every one of us who know you. Lord, if there's someone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that you would speak to their heart, God, open their eyes to your truth, and may they call upon your great name. Help me to preach plain and clear, Lord. I do realize that there is a strict judgment on my life in rightly dividing the word of truth, and I accept that place. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray and his name that I preach. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So we have this really nice paint palette here. Uh, it reminds me of someone that I have watched uh, by the name of Bob Ross. Does anyone, raise your hand if you've watched Bob Ross. Now keep him up if you have actually painted along with Bob Ross. Oh, oh, come on. We have this section over here. All right, we got, some, we got some painters over here. You know, Bob Ross, he is so fun because, you know, he's, he, 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 he helps you paint these nature pictures, which seems like, man, there's no way you can do it. But then you, if you follow his method and you just follow along, you do a pretty decent job. You know, he's, he takes the paint, and he just kind of mixes it all around. He uses just two-inch br brushes, different types of brushes, and he just starts slapping paint on there, you know, just, you know, just do this, just, and he whips it around, you know, and so you just, you're watching, you, go, you know, you're trying to do the same thing, and, and, uh, and then you call a little bit of this color and this color, and he just mixes it, puts it up, and then, and then he's like, we got to have a tree, and he paints a tree, but a tree can't just be by itself. Oh, no, the tree has to have what? Has to have a friend. If you've watched Bob Ross, you know every tree has to have a friend. Can't be lonely. He's got to paint another tree by there. He's got a happy tree. It's a happy tree, you know. Has happy little bushes, you know, and all this stuff. And and put, and then all of a sudden you start seeing the sky develop and and the pond develop and then there's the river bank and you're like, whoa, you know. And it just the more he paints, the more it just comes in. And it's like, wow, that's a that's a really cool picture. The, when Paul says, uh, for we are his workmanship, the New Living Translation translates that word as masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. The Greek word there for workmanship is, is a new creation. It goes back to the idea of Genesis in Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth. 
And what Paul is saying is that as believers, we are a new creation that has been created in Christ Jesus, and we are the masterpiece or the workmanship of God. Now, that's where we end. But how did we get there? How did we become a work of art in the eyes of God? Well, Paul reminds us, those of us who are believers, and if you're not a believer here this morning, then this is the condition that you are in right now. He reminds us of what our painting was like or what our life was like before we met Christ. The palette that we were painting off of. He goes, let's go back to verse 1 in chapter 2. He says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins. You were dead. You were working on a dead palette. You see, what happened when God created mankind, uh, he created us that we would know him and have a relationship with him, but man rebelled against God, sinned. We wanted to paint our own picture. We wanted to use our own colors. God had had provided a palette of, uh, of his blessings that we could walk in them and we could enjoy him, and man said, no, thank you. I think I'll take my own canvas, I'll take my own palette, I'll create my own paint, and I'll do my life the way I want to do my life. And the Bible calls that attitude sin. And sin, the Bible says, leads to death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. For all have sinned, right? It says all have sinned, not just some have sinned. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so we began painting our life with our own rules. And as I must remind you, as I repeat this verse a lot, there is a way that seems right unto man, but in the end it leads to death. Now watch, let's continue. Verse 2. So we were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. We walked and lived our lives not in accordance to God's way, but in accordance to the world's way. And instead of being conformed to the word of God and to his truth, we began to be conformed to the world's way of thinking. And so we lived by pleasure. If it felt good, we what? We did it. We didn't think about, you know, do it and then think about the consequences later. Living in the flesh, verse 3, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Those who are not in relationship with God through the Son is an enemy of God, the Bible says, and the wrath of God abides on him or her. And so we need grace and mercy and forgiveness. We need to be made right. Because what we've done is we've taken our own palette and we've used all of our colors and we've, and we've done it the way we wanted to and, and if we felt like doing it, we did it. And we, we lived from what, what we thought was right, passions, lust. When we sin, we sinned with things that brought us pleasure through our flesh. Because the Bible does say that sin has its fun in its season. But in the end, it bites like a snake. You know, uh, our fleshy desires bring about sometimes thrills, right? Have any of you all have ever sinned and enjoyed sinning? Anybody? Besides your pastor? Come on. (laughs) Don't leave me hanging. Now listen, because we we sin, the fleshy sin nature of, of us gravitates to the things that we enjoy because we sin with the things that we enjoy, right? You know, there's a reason why most people don't eat Brussels sprouts, right? Because they, they're not any good. You're like, and if you like Brussels sprouts, that's fine. You eat them. I'll eat the chocolate cake. You give me the chocolate cake. Um, and, and so we sin with the things that appeal to our own flesh, 
and, and we all have weaknesses and desires. And our flesh wants to break out and just do whatever we want and, and not listen to God. And so when we're walking in the flesh, when we're dead, we're painting our life with all of these sinful desires and pleasures and fleshy things, and we're not thinking about God. We don't care about God. We're not looking to please God. In fact, uh, we're running as far away from God as possible, and, and God's not even in our thought. And so we're, we're doing our life, and then, and then all of a sudden, but God. All of a sudden, God intervenes. All of a sudden, God says, I'm going to do a new work in you. He could have left mankind all to his wrath, but he didn't. He could have just sent the whole world to hell and said that everybody doesn't, nobody seeks me. There's none who does good. There's none righteous. And, but he didn't because God's grace continues to pursue a broken and prodigal people. And so he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that he would take the wrath of God for us and that he would atone. And so, so that if we believe in him, we will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. And so here we are painting our life with all this mess and our, and our canvas, is, it, it, it's looking bad. It's bad. It doesn't bring glory to God. It doesn't bring honor to God. And then God invades and he brings his grace. Verse 4, but God... Oh, I love that phrase, but God. But God, being what? Rich in mercy. Because of the great love which he loved us. Now notice, because of whose love? His love. Now, you got to understand that. It wasn't that God looked down and saw all the mess that we were painting and said, oh, aren't they just great people? No, they had making a mess, and it was because of his great love. They didn't, we didn't love God. The Bible says this, we love him because he first loved us. It wasn't because of our love for God. It wasn't because we said, our life's a mess, what can I do about it? It was because of God's great love that he intervened. It was because of his mercy that he was rich in, that he lavished upon us, verse Five, even when we were dead in our trespasses, even when we were dead, even when we didn't want God, love God, serve God, he still had a love for us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace have you been saved. That day that you stepped out of your tomb, it wasn't your idea, it was God's. It was the Holy Spirit of God who convicted you of your sin and made you realize that you were a sinner in need of a Savior. It was the Holy Spirit of God who convinced you of the reality of the truth that Jesus is indeed the Lord, that he was crucified on the cross and he rose again. It was the Holy Spirit who even enabled you the power and the ability to call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, forgive, get, forgive me. It was he that made us alive together. Aren't you glad that the grace of God is more powerful than our own sinful deeds, that he can make us alive together with him? that we have been saved by his great grace. Somebody say, amen. He has not only, he, 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 he didn't do this. He didn't just say, you all need to work on your canvas and, and be better. You know, just quit painting so bad and start painting better and you'll be fine. That's not the gospel. That's not the grace. He didn't just tell us to improve on our painting and begin living right. He said, you're dead in your sin, so I'm going to make you alive, and I'm going to give you a whole new canvas, and I'm going to give you a whole new palette, and I'm going to paint your life. You've made a mess of your life. I'm the artist, not you, and I'm going to work you in the creation that I have made you to be because I am the God who saved you and redeemed you, and I have made you alive, and we also see here that he has seated us in heavenly places. Look at verse 6, and he raised us up with him and seated us us with him and the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus what it is is that when we're in heaven you see God there is he's not bound by time so he knows the beginning and the end he knows he's already he knows everything he's not bound by space time like we are 
And so it's, it's God sees us already there in heaven, seated, at, seated with him in the heavenly places. Why? Because Jesus rose from the grave. He is seated at the right hand, interceding, making intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. And, and so in eternity's perspective, it, we're there and we're his workmanship uh, to show off his immeasurable grace and mercy. We're his works of art that when, when we're in heaven, people are going to look at that and say, man, Look what God did. I mean, you're going to be there. And, you, and, and, and again, it, for by grace are you saved through faith. It, it is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. I said this before, and I'll, I'll keep saying it until the, I quit preaching. I'm so glad there's not going to be braggers in heaven, aren't you? There's nobody going to be in heaven going, look at my painting. Look at how great I did with my life. Wasn't I awesome? No. It's going to be, look what God did. Look what God did. Look how, look how he fashioned and formed. Look, how he, look what he did in my life. He, he, we're we're going to show off his grace. And when we're going we're gonna to see people, we're gonna, it's going to be another testimony of what Jesus did. We're going to see people and be like, man, look what God did. Look what God did. I mean, Chris, even when you're in heaven, we're going to be like, even he used Chris's life to do something amazing. I mean, look how good God is. Amen. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing. Uh, I feel good. I, I know him real well. I can do that. Look how good God is. Because none of us will have deserved to be there but through the grace of God and his rich mercy, which he lavished out on us, which he made us alive together, which he set us in heavenly places. You see who's doing all this? It's not us, it's who? It's God. And then... It gets us to our scripture verse, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so he's, he's saying, once we walked in our evil deeds, because we were slaves to our sin... And we were coloring with our own palette. But now, since we've been made alive in Christ Jesus, we've been made a whole new creation. The Bible calls it being born again or the new birth. Theologians call it regeneration. That we've been made new by the Holy Spirit. We've been given a complete new canvas, a whole new palette where God paints his grace on us. He paints his mercy And he implants and and seals us with the Holy Spirit so that we can experience the color of joy, the color of peace, the color of patience, the color of kindness, the way that the Bible says is kindness, the color of love, the way that the Bible explains love as. We can experience the colors of his goodness, of forgiveness. And so God begins to work in us He puts it in us. And so Paul in Philippians says, he says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you to will and to do. So God gives us this palette and then then we work out those colors. He changes our desires. When you're born again, then you have a new desire. You should have a desire to want to, to read his word. God puts that color in your life. You should want to be with God's people and be part of a fellowship because God puts that color in your life and it works out by gathering together with the saints. You should want to be people who give generously, who worship passionately, who pray earnestly, who serves faithfully, who learns diligently. Why? Because he's putting all these colors in, in us and he's giving us the new desires and new hearts. And then, and when we're wrong, the old me might want to get revenge, but now since I've got this color of forgiveness that, that Jesus has given me, I can forgive even when the flesh wouldn't want to. You see how it works? 
And God has prepared this beautiful palette of his colors of mercy and grace that we would walk in those and that our life would be painted by those. You know, he also uses suffering. There's times when he puts a color in our life that we would rather him not have had done. You know, suffering sometimes brings us to more dependence on God, brings us to more trust on God, brings us to a, a realization that we can't do it without God. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we also have obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope for the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. What? Yeah, we rejoice in our sufferings. Why? Knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So all of these things that happen to us that come our way, God, God has given this palette of his, of his grace and mercy, of this, these colors of his kingdom that we are to walk in. So that's why the Bible says, do not walk in the flesh, but to walk in the spirit. Put to deeds the lust of the flesh, right? God's prepared this, this, this fruit of the spirit, the, the, the grace of his kingdom. And so that when I, when I do sin, and when I do say something or or think something that I shouldn't say, the Holy Spirit reminds me, that's not, that's not right. right. Now, as Christians, sometimes we can still act honorary, can't we? Sometimes we can, we can say something we shouldn't say, we can think something we shouldn't think, we can even do something that we shouldn't do. But the Holy Spirit convicts us, says, no, that's, that's not right. That's not how you act. That's not the palette that I have given you. You've gotten the old one back out and starting to paint with your own brush. Put it down. Put that to death. And so as a Christian, we should be sensitive to what God's doing and saying. And so if God puts, us, puts it on our heart and says, you need to forgive that person. You need to go to that person. You should go to that person. You should follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Lord impresses upon you uh, to witness to someone, say, hey, hey you, you, need, you need to go check on this person and just say hi and, and, and invite them to church. Guess what you need to do? You need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because he's painting your life and he's leading you. And the more that we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more God can use us. The more sensitive we become, to him being the artist and letting him mold us and shape us because we're his workmanship for his glory. When we say, God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. Where you want me to go, that's where I want to go. What you want me to say, that's what I want to say. I'm yours. Monday as we wake up, we don't know what the day holds. We don't know the future. We can't see. But we serve the God who knows. And so what would it look like if we began like faith like a child? I heard one of the children just answer one of the questions when I was preaching. I, it, it, it was phenomenal. Just faith like a child saying, Lord, I want to yield to you. I want to yield to you. When I'm feeling impatient, I yield to the Holy Spirit. When I'm feeling angry, yield to the Holy Spirit. Yield to the one who's got the palette of grace and mercy, who is working life situations to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus so that in ages to come, we will be a display of his goodness. Now this morning, I want to challenge every single one of us who claim the name Christian. 
And I want to ask you this one simple question. How often are you trying to paint your own life rather than yielding to the Holy Spirit and obeying what He says to do and letting Him form and mold you? So this week, yield. Recognize the the palette of His grace and mercy. Walk in the colors that He has provided for you. Walk in His joy. Even if even if there's sorrow all around you. Walk in His kindness. Even if there is anger all around you. Walk in His love. Even if there's lust all around. Walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, if you're not a believer, if you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, I want to ask you to to lay the brush down. Put that palette away. Call upon the grace of God and say, Jesus, I need you. Save me. I've made a muck of my life. My painting is bringing no joy, no lasting joy, no hope, no promise of everlasting life. It's leading to death. And I want a new start. I want a whole new canvas. Not one that I'm just trying to reshape, but one that you have made new. And would you come to faith and trust in Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you have provided for us everything that we need to live a life pleasing to you. That you have given us a palette of your grace and your mercy that you have prepared from the foundation of the world that we would walk in them. So Lord, I pray that we as believers, we would walk in your love, we would walk in your peace. We would walk in your grace, your forgiveness, your standards, O Lord. Lord, someone today needs to trust in you. They need to follow you. They need to call upon you. I pray that today that they would say, I I want to be made new. I want God to be the maker and the artist of my life. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.